love that brave movie. I do. I get references all the time. Are you here the whole time? Are you? That's no. Oh. I said, what wow. was I here? Yes, I've, I've watched the whole thing unfold. Hi, everybody. Oh. We're going to talk about acting. Acting. Very important. Acting. Yes. Right. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to tell you why. I want to, I'm going to give you the speech that everybody else got from Dr. B a few weeks ago, well, about a month or so ago, um, about what our approach to singing is here at CWU. I'm going to make a very shortened version of her speech, OK? All right? So um, what are some of the elements of, what are, just throw some words out here. What are some of the elements of performance? So, what do you have to do well to be a good, it, what, what elements are there to a good performance? How's that sound? Okay? So, throw out some elements here. What's, what are some elements of a good performance? Energetic. Being energetic. Okay, good. Just anything. Just, just throw them at me. Okay? Being expressive. Being expressive. Connecting with the audience. Connecting mm -hmm. with audience. Okay? Conviction of your character. So it's like you're you're um, you're connected to your piece. You're okay. Fully, you're fully engaged. With so background. You're what? You're fully engaged with your. Piece. Okay. Fully engaged. Fully engaged. Okay. All right. Yes. Might tie in with the other ones, but just general stage presence. Okay. All right. We're missing some pretty crucial, some pretty crucial stuff up here. Because I think what you're thinking of, right, is what's important to a good performance the moment that I'm on stage performing. Mm -hmm. But there's an awful lot that impacts a good performance that happens way before you ever stand on stage, right? So let's get some of those ideas. What impacts a good performance? Yes. Technique. Technique. Thank you. Yes. Uh, vocal health. Vocal health. Okay. Yes. Uh, do you like practice with your performance? Oh, okay, practicing like you practice, like you will perform. Okay. Okay. Yes. When you're researching. You're Research, absolutely. Research, we're going to put, you know, uh, text translation, right? IPA, right? Okay. Anybody else? These are all things that go into preparing for. Knowing yes. your character. Knowing your character, if you're singing an opera, if you're singing um, a character from an opera, something like that, all right. All right. This is a pretty big one, huh? That's a pretty big catch-all, isn't it? Okay. All right. I would define technique, all right, as your ability to create a beautiful tone. Okay. Technique is all about the ability to create beautiful tone. Okay. Let's say that. So let's group some of these things together. Okay. So we could probably put some of these things together. Um, this is uh, your energy in a performance, right? Okay. Uh, then we have expressive, connect with the audience, fully engaged, uh, stage presence, right? This is sort of what we're going to talk about today, right? Acting, right? Okay. How you deliver to the audience what you have, okay? Um, then we have research, practice like you're going to perform, vocal health. Those are all kind of you know, those are all preparatory things, right? Preparation of music and individual pieces. Okay. All right, we have technique, right? That kind of goes in there. Okay. Like I said, I'm, I'm making this a very shortened version of Dr. Dr. B's speech there today. All right. So then we're going to make a pyramid. All right. Here's a pyramid. Okay. Now. If we were to fill in the 
this pyramid with different amounts of these things, okay, um, that go towards making a good performance, okay? One of those things, one of those things, is I'm going to conservatively say, fill up two, the bottom two-thirds of the pyramid. Bottom two-thirds of the pyramid, okay? Without this thing, everything else is irrelevant. Everything else is window dressing, okay? If you try to do everything other than this, beyond this thing, without this thing, right? You are dressing up a pig, okay? So what is it? What fills the bottom two thirds? Technique. Technique. Okay? Technique. Now why do I bring that up? I bring that up because a lot of us love this third, okay? A lot of us do this because of this third, all right? Especially this top part here, which is acting, expression, connecting to the audience, okay? But I think it's critical that I start a talk on the acting or the interpretation of song and opera by saying that this is what I think is the most important thing. Without this, this becomes irrelevant. Now, do these affect each other? Do how you do this affect how you do this? Absolutely, absolutely, okay? But again, the point is, if you're not concentrating on this, all right, and so often, one of the difficulties we have is young people wanting to jump to this, okay, before they've established this. Can you see how jumping to this could cause all sorts of problems in this, okay? Because, especially if this is not clearly understood how to create this, all right? And especially if this isn't your priority. If this is your priority, this is gonna look very different, okay? How many people know who Renee Fleming is? Right, okay, Renee Fleming, world famous opera singer, okay? Her attention to this is directly affected by her need to create this. Helena Bottom Carter does not have that problem. We all know who that is, mm -hmm. right? The bad guy in Harry Potter, right? She doesn't have that problem. She can go right to here, okay? She can sit in a, and she can sit in a big old chair any way she wants to, right? <laughs> all trumped over like this. Can Renee Fleming do that? No, right? Because she has to be concerned with this, all right? Okay, so I say that because it's very important. Look, when you're in high school, all right, and I'm not dissing any choir directors out, out there, okay? When you're in high school, 90% of that choir director's job is to get you excited and passionate about music, all right? And one of the best ways to do that is to talk to you about how you're going to move the audience, about the interpretation of the music, about what you have to say, okay? Is that critical? Of course it's critical, right? But it's nothing without this, all right? So I just wanted to start out that way today. Okay, great. Now, um, Good, 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 good. So the next thing I want to say is when, darn it, it went right out of my mind. Oh well, we'll come back. Okay, so we have this difference, but, but that is not to say that this isn't important, right? Okay, because we're all, in the end, we all want to be artists. That's why we're here, that's why we do this, okay? Okay, great. So what is awesome? What is essentially different about the performing arts versus the, um, what's the word for things that are not performing? Visual, visual, visual arts. arts. Visual arts, thanks. I remember what that is. Maybe I just don't think it's important. No, okay, versus the visual arts, like, like Van Gogh, right? Or, uh, you know, um, a statue, something like that. Okay, what's, what's, for our purposes, what's the biggest difference? No sound. No sound, that's true, that's true. But I can be a mime. Yeah, okay. Even though I usually want to hurt mimes. Yes. What's that? There is an audience, but there's an audience at the Louvre, right, when they go to see the, the paintings. That's kind of an audience, right? Yeah. Yes. The paintings are only done once, and whereas acting or singing, you do it differently every time you do it. 
Okay. Can we take that one step further? Yes? There's no movement. No movement. Yes. Yes? It's like in the moment, whereas the pages I created is me in the moment. Okay. Great. You are part of the art. Okay? That's what rocks about the performing arts. Okay? It's not done. You look at Van Gogh's sunflowers, and it's done. It's up on the wall, and it's beautiful. I love Van Gogh, okay? especially since I watched Dr. Who. <laughs> but it's done. There's no, you know, apart from the person who hangs it in the museum and puts the lighting on it, okay, there's no more art to be done there. Okay? Not so for us. All right? We're an essential part of this process. We're an essential part of creating this art. And that's a responsibility. Okay? Because these guys who wrote this music, and women who wrote this music so many years ago, okay, did so with the hope that people would listen to it and enjoy it and be a part of it, okay? And they left that up to us. Because without, and the other thing is, without us, it is nothing, right? There's an old joke, you know, musicologists, you know what a musicologist is, right? Musicologists feel that music should be seen and not heard, right? It's just there to study, okay? Right? That's not it. That's not what the art is for us, okay? So here's how I think of it when I prepare a song or when I think about acting in a song, okay? And we're gonna talk about acting today in terms of song literature, and we're gonna talk about acting in terms of opera, okay? And see any scene work you may do, and even some musical theater, okay? That's a lot, it's a very ambitious program for only 50 minutes, okay? All right? But here's how I think about it. Here was Giacomo Puccini, right? Right? And he had this idea. He had this idea because he saw a play about a Japanese woman who entered into a relationship with an American sailor. And he sailed off, she had a baby, and he came back with his American wife, right? And she wanted the baby to go home with him, so she kills herself. He saw this play. And he was incredibly moved, okay? So he had this picture of her singing a song about the return someday of this American sailor, and how everything was gonna be beautiful, and it's springtime, and there are the cherry blossoms, right? Okay? And he was inspired, and he was a very musical person, and he had this music running around in his head. Maybe he sat at the piano, and he played this music, right? And he heard it. So then what he did was, he took this music and these words from up here in his head, in his imagination, as he saw it on stage, and he put it down on a piece of paper, okay? And he wrote it down, and so that 150 years later, right, we could read it, and we could take it, and then our responsibility is to put it back up here again, okay? All right? Is it going to look exactly like it looked when he took it down? No. Absolutely not, okay? If you do the aria and you do the aria, is it going to look the same? Absolutely not, okay? It's going to look different for every person in this room that sings it, all right? So this is something really important to remember. You may not sing it like Renee Flynn, but I wouldn't expect you to. I would expect you to sing it like you sing it. That is your aria, that is your moment, okay? And in that moment of time, you're responsible for bringing it to life, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so when I prepare a song, that's how I think about it. I think, well, that's why it's so much fun for me, because I feel like he had this great idea, and I can see what his ideas were to the best of my ability. I can't talk to him, you know? Um, although I knew, a, I knew a conductor who thought she could talk to Mozart, but that's a whole different <laughs> So uh, I can't talk to him, but I can see what he's written. I can see what other people have written about him. Very important, right? I can read the opera libretto. I can read the original play. I can find out what all those characters think about him, right? I can watch a million versions on videotape and see what I like and what I don't like, and what I agree with and what I want to throw out, what I want to steal and what I don't want to steal, okay? But in the end, I'm going to have to come up with my version, and that's called the creative process. Now, some of you know that, and I only mention this because I love to brag, <laughs> some of you know that I did musical theater for a while, all right? And a lot of my friends at the time thought I was nuts to leave musical theater. But the reason I left musical theater was because it was no longer creative. I was doing the same thing eight times a week in the same theater for two years in a row, okay? And I came back to opera because of what we're going to talk about today. Because of the ability for me to get my two cents in. And as Dr. Lee will tell you, I love to get my two cents in. Okay? <laughs> All right? So that's 
really where you're going with this, right? That's really where you're going with it, okay? All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about acting. Um, what I'd like to do, for those of you who are in opera, this will be a little bit of a repeat. I'd like to do just one really quick short session of some improvisational stuff, okay? Just to loosen things up and get people to understand about the concept of taking chances. So, I need four volunteers who aren't in opera. In the opera. Yes, 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 and yes. Come on up. Great. Okay. So, as singers, a lot of you have heard this spiel before. And so, you know, if you've heard my spiel before, please don't be bored, don't fall asleep, don't go onto your Facebook account or anything like that, okay? But uh, for me, you've already, all of you, how many people have sung juries here? Okay. Have you played jury? Okay. You've already, well, and you've also been in class with me, so. Uh, every single person in this room has already done something that 99% of people on this planet will never do, and that is to get up and sing in front of other people, okay? That is an act of absolute either idiocy or bravery. I'd like to go with bravery, okay? It's an absolute confidence of bravery. So the next time you get up to sing, before you walk on the stage, say, you know what? I'm nervous about this. It may not be perfect, but I'm doing something that 99% of the people on the rest of this planet are never gonna do. And that's gotta be worth something, okay? So, it's all about taking chances, right? And what are taking chances? Taking chances are being willing to take a chance that somebody might laugh at you. Now, you might be like me, and you might like live for the moment when people laugh at you, okay? <laughs> but you might not, you might not. And you have to find your own comfort with it, okay? You have to find your own comfort level. But that's what taking a chance is. It's going out there, putting yourself on the line, and people either love it, or they hate it, or they throw it back, or whatever, okay? So we're gonna take some chances here, all right? So I'd like you to come here, and you're here in the middle, okay? All right, now. This game is called interpretation, okay? So you're an interpreter and you're an interpreter, all right? You two speak in a foreign language, make it up. Absolute gibberish, okay? I want you to say something to him, okay? And then I want you to interpret, okay? And then I want you to say something to him, and then I want you to interpret, okay? Don't do what they did in opera the other day, which was just start going off on each other, like the two people gibbering. And I'm just like, that doesn't do us any good. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I was like, what? It's like, okay. So you. No, no, no. You make up. Oh, you have to be in English. Is that what you're asking? Well, like, yes, speak in English, but are we allowed to make up, like, characters or names? He, you're not, he's making up nonsense. He's going to go, I know, but do I... And you just make up whatever you want. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Free ring. That's the beauty. <laughs> and you too. You just, you know, you know, my, pony, my pony's on fire, you know? What could I possibly care? My dog's in the blender. Can I make up <laughs> you know, that kind of thing? All right? Can I make up yes. different <laughs> make up whatever you want. Okay, now here's the thing. Here's the thing. It would be nice if you guys played off each other a little bit so it was like you were really having a conversation. If you go off to Mars and you go off to Venus, then it doesn't, you know, I guess that's what Okay? All right, so go ahead. Let's, let's have uh, you start. Okay, go ahead. Shabalo Kato. Wait, 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 wait. So you interpret. Go ahead. Dude, why did you throw a rock at my foot or my knee? <laughs> Make up your mind. What did I hit? Hasaka! <laughs> Chichi chala po bo. No, no, you got <laughs> See, we don't know what you're saying. So we got to let her translate for him. Okay, let her translate for him. Go ahead. Go ahead. My shin, it hurt. Did they poo poo for la That ain't my problem. Hasakazu, padu! Never mind. I'll just throw a garble smock through your window. <laughs> I tamed our snars for a living. You'll never catch me. Hasa <laughs> Kasa I don't have to. Windows can't run. Shepherd Bobo Chichi There will be no friend. Wow! Haba Dubu Aba? What are you planning to do with that? 
le pupo djembe, drop off dull djembe. Unicorns are hard mark, doesn't matter. <laughs> Agadugu. This unicorn is beautiful, not insulting. <laughs> <laughs> this unicorn is my wife. So you decided to super glue our hands to this giant banana. Well, I've only got one arm, and maybe if I, oh crap. <laughs> uh, <coughs> do you think that you can get your foot up here and get my phone out of my pocket, okay? Oh, wrong, wrong one, you gotta go on the other side. It's on that side. Freeze. Okay, freeze, somebody else go. Somebody else go. Go, 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 Fiona, go, go, go. Diet. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't want to. But you're a little teapot. 
five.
again, you have all of this dramatic material to inform you, okay? So, how do you prepare to even begin that process? Well, you do exactly what I was talking about. You research what every single person in that opera says about your character, okay? You go through that opera, and anytime your character is mentioned or referenced to, right, you take a note of who said it, and how, the, maybe it's a mental note. I'm not saying you have to write it down. But who said it, why did they say it, how does that define their relationship, okay? So that's one way of informing yourself. If you're doing, one of my favorites, if you're doing Marriage of Figaro, you may go read all the Beaumarchais plays. You may go read the other plays that impact Marriage of Figaro, okay? Marriage of Figaro is actually the middle play, right? The first play was uh, Barbara of Seville, and the opera was actually written way after Mozart wrote Marriage of Figaro, right? So he wrote the middle one, then Rossini wrote Barbara of Seville later, which is like, a, it's like doing a prequel nowadays, right, okay? <laughs> right, and then, the third one was made into what came to be known, or was sort of co-opted into what came to be known as the Ghost of Versailles, which is the new opera that they premiered in Vienna. It's uh, about 15 years old or so. So, um, but you inform yourself as much as you can from the drama and the other characters, okay? You see what the playwright has to say. You can look up what Mozart had to say, okay, about the characters, all right? You can find out, for instance, that certain of the soprano, soprano, sorry. You can find out that certain of the soprano arias are wicked hard because he was PO'd at the woman who was going to sing them, right? So he decided he'd give her a little something to sing, right? Okay? So you can, you can inform yourself with all of that stuff, right? But when it comes down to it, then you have the aria proper, okay? And what I encourage you to do with an aria, all right, is to always find a focus about what you're singing about, okay? Now. I am not encouraging you to, I'm singing about a comb, so now I'm going to focus on the comb. I'm singing about a balloon, so now I'm going to focus on the balloon. No, you're usually thinking about a person, right? You're thinking about a place, you're thinking about a situation, okay? And you're imagining that in your mind's eye, okay? And I would go so far as to say, create those focuses for yourself, right, at a specific place. So I'm going to give you a very concrete example so that you don't walk away saying, gosh, that sounded really like great, but what's he talking about, okay? Um, how many people have heard Joey sing uh, the Horace Caver aria from Baby Doe? Yeah. I think most of you. Didn't he sing it in the studio? Yeah, back home in Vermont. Back home in Vermont, right? The trees in New Hampshire, the first side of the mountains, right? And when I worked on that aria with Joey, I said, okay, now baby Doe's up in her room. You put her up in your room, okay? Up in her room. And when you sing about her, you're thinking about her being up there, all right? So in your mind's eye, she's up there. Does that mean you have to look at her all the time? Absolutely not. It just means you know where she is. You know what? Your subconscious is gonna fill a lot of this in for you, okay? You know where she is. When you're singing about her or to her, we know that you know where she is. It's enough that, that you know where she is. We'll buy into it. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Then, if he talks about the 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 sea in New, the first uh, the ocean in New Hampshire, if he talks about the trees in Vermont, those can be different places. They can be different focuses, right? Okay. Focuses can be as varied as the subject material that you're covering. Okay. But you have to have a clear idea of what you're thinking about. If you end up just singing. You'll lose us. You'll lose us, okay? This is not the art of singing a duet, a trio, or a quartet. That's when it gets really easy, because then you're just singing to each other, okay? Then you know what your focus is. You can create some other focuses. This is the art of being on stage by your, your, your you know, sole person on stage and creating focuses so that your mind is somewhere. Because you know what? Your mind is always somewhere. Your mind is always focusing on something, whether you're aware of it or not, okay? So you've got to create those focuses and come back to that so you can fill in the picture for us, okay? Now, I'm going to do an aria. Yay. And uh, I want you to tell me, I want you to be paying attention so you can tell me what my focuses were, okay? All right, okay. So this aria is from A Ball in the Night Visitors. Oh, this is my box. 
Um, I'm just going to set it up for you really quickly. Uh, the three kings are on their way to see the birth of the baby Jesus, and they stop by Amal, a crippled shepherd boy's home, um, on the way to rest. And um, one of the kings, King Caspar, is a little bit crazy, and he carries a box with him everywhere he goes. And Amal wants to know what's in the box. That's it. Okay. You know what? I'm going to change your plan. I love when you guys do that. I'm going to sing it once without focuses. And then I'm going to sing it with focuses. Okay? When I sing it with focuses, I want you to pay attention and tell me what my focuses were. Okay? And this is a good test for me, because we'll see if I'm doing my job. Okay? So. This is my box. This is my box. I never travel without my box. In the first drawer, I keep my magic stones. One carnelian against all evil it can be. One moonstone to make you sleep. One red thorn to heal your wounds. One lapis lazuli against court and fever. One small jasper to help you find water. One small topaz to soothe your eyes. One red will be to protect you from lightning. This is my box, this is my box. I never travel without my box. In the second drawer I keep all my beads. Oh, how I love to play with beads. All kinds of beads. This is my box, this is my box. I never travel without my box. In the third drawer, in the third drawer, a little boy, oh, little boy, in the third drawer I keep. Licorice, licorice, black sweet licorice, black sweet licorice, and some. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that had one focus straight ahead. Nothing, nothing going through my mind except words and pitches and rhythms, and maybe a little bit how I said the words. Okay. All right. All right. So now I'm not going to give you any setup. You've got to figure everything out for yourself. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going into New York City. Uh, I'm in New York City. I'm going in for a professional audition. And I walk in. I say, "Good afternoon. My name is Torrance Blaisdell." Never say I would like to begin with. Because that always assumes you get to sing the second. <laughs> no, never say I'd like to begin with. Always say, I would like to sing. Um, this is my box from Marnaki's uh, Amal and Red Roses. This is my box. This is my box. I never travel without my box. In the first drawer, I keep my magic stones. One carnelian against all evil and envy. One moonstone to make you sleep. One red coral to heal your wounds. One lapis lazuli against court and fever. One small jasper to help you find water. One small topaz to soothe your eyes. One red ruby to protect you from lightning. This is my box. This is my box. I never travel without my box. In the second drawer, I keep all my beads. Oh, how I love to play with beads. <laughs> all kinds of beads. This is my box. This is my box. I never travel without my box. In the third drawer. In the third drawer.
Down right. Does he ever move? No. No, no not for the whole arm. Now, that doesn't mean he can't move. All right? But for the sake of this, he does not move. All right? What else? Another focus. Yes? The box to your left. The box. The box is here to my left. Right? We don't know how tall the box is. We don't know how short the box is. We know there's a box. We know it has three doors. That's pretty much what we know. Right? Okay. What else? Another focus. Yes? Everything that's in the box. Yeah. So each jewel had its own focus, didn't it? Yeah. Right. What could I have done that Mr. B doesn't like so much instead of doing that for each of those jewels? Yes, thank you. What's that called? Uh, it's called pantomime. Yeah. Right. I hate pantomime, okay? Sometimes it's the only way around things, and sometimes it's, it's critical to a scene, okay? The only thing worse than pantomiming is using something as a prop. Never ever do an audition or sing an aria for people in isolation and act like you have a prop, okay? Somebody told me, um, I'm trying to think which love song it was, but it was some big love aria, and he sang the whole thing to a water bottle, okay? Right? There's no way that guy's getting the job, okay? They're not impressed, all right? So, anyway, please don't pantomime. It's better to not like, oh, look, I have a jewel. Can you tell it's a jewel? No. I'm singing about the jewels. I made that choice, okay? What other focuses were there? Yes? I don't know if it was actually a focus, but I definitely noticed the transition from sanity to insanity when you kind of Sanity reset. to insanity. It is very much a focus. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay? Why is it a focus? It's a focus because he's focusing on his own world. Mm -hmm. He goes off into his own world, right? And I'm very purposeful when I do that aria to see his world, okay, as he sees it. And then he can, <coughs> and he comes back. Because he's not so crazy that he doesn't know he's crazy. Right? Really crazy people don't know they're crazy. Like <laughs> Rachel. But, <laughs> but he's not so crazy that he's that, that bad. Okay, did you have something? No, that's actually the yeah. same. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you see how in that aria, and I picked that aria on purpose, obviously, because it has a lot of focuses, right? Because it has a lot of specificity. Okay, all right. You can see how... This job is a little bit easier when we do an aria, can't you? Right? Because you can say, I'm singing, um, there's a fabulous uh, aria that, um, that Figaro sings in Marriage of Figaro about uh, Se vuol barare. Does everybody know, anybody know that? Se vuol barare, right? And it's if you want to, if the, the count is trying to sleep with Figaro's wife, okay? And Figaro sings Se vuol barare. It says, if you want to dance, I'll call the tune. Want to advance, I'll call the tune. And he plots on how he's going to trick the dude because he's incredibly clever. That's what that's his superpower, right? So um, and and he can see, you can see a good figure of looking at the count. And you can see signor continuo. And you can see the despise, you know, how much he despises him, you know, and the hatred in his face, right? But he's very clear. Can the count move around? You know, absolutely. Absolutely, as long as you're clear and it makes sense. It's when you start doing this and your focuses are random and not planned out. All right, so that's the other thing I want to get to, all right, about acting and singing, all right? To me, I plan every moment that people I work with have on stage. Every hand, every gesture, every foot, everything, okay? Is that because I expect to see it that way in performance? No. It's because without a plan, you'll be wandering free. And nobody wants to be wandering free, okay? If you have a plan to fall back on, then you can go off plan as much as you want. Because you always have that to come back to. It's a safe harbor, okay? But without a plan, just hoping that you can make it up on the spot, all right, you're dead. Okay, now, I've got five minutes to talk about the hardest part, okay, which is art song. What did Mr. B say about opera? I do it because it's easy. <laughs> right. Opera, art song, in my opinion, is very difficult. <laughs> okay? It's very difficult. It's just you. It's just you. Yes? Um, oh, I was about to say, like, when you, an, I took an acting class, an acting master class, and they talked a lot about intention and why you're saying something. Uh huh. Why uh -huh. don't you take that and then make a story behind that so you have something to react to? Absolutely, you could. That's absolutely, that's absolutely true. And it's going to depend on the art song, right? It's going to depend on the art song, all right? Some art songs will have, um, some art songs will have 
a number of focuses that you can focus on. Many art songs do not. Many art songs are about the elder, uh, love, right? Okay, especially French art songs. <laughs> and you're usually singing them to one other person. Okay, all right. But what I want to encourage you to do is just because you look at an art song, and I brought my book with me. Um, I brought my book with me because I want to use an art song that I worked on with a student today. Oh yeah, that's my wife's headshot. That's actually her old headshot. Yeah, pretty hot. <laughs> no, that wasn't it. I know it was French. Ouvez-vous. <laughs> Ask any of my students. My teaching's not as fun as this. Christina's like, well, I don't know, it's pretty crazy. Okay, sorry, here it is. Okay, the song's called No Pramur by Juarez, right? Our love is a light thing, like the, like the perfumes that the wind brings from the tips of the ferns and lets us breathe them and dream. Our love is a charming thing, like the songs of the morning where no sorrow is voiced, where an uncertain hope vibrates. Our love is a sacred thing, like the mysteries of the woods, where an unknown soul is throbbing, where silence has silences found voices. Our love is an infinite thing, like the paths of the sunsets, where the sea, reuniting with the sky, falls asleep beneath the setting suns. Our love is an eternal thing, like everything that a conquering god touches with the fire of his wing, like all that comes from the heart. Right? So, what would the kiss of death acting-wise be here, right? Our love is an infinite thing, right? Like the paths of the sunsets, right? All of a sudden you're in a, you know, little high of Okay? Okay, right. But focus is just as important. Okay? What is your focus? What is your focus here? Yeah? You could do the kind of whole, like, standing to the thing again and again, so you think of love as kind of like a place to be standing. You, you could go into your own little world and be like, I see these forests, I see these paths, I see this infinite vast ocean, and you can snap back to the, like, our love is... Okay, okay, choice. What do we think of the choice? Is that going to be clear for the audience? No. Okay. Something with little hand signs. Right? Yeah? Depending on how you interpret it, you could either be, like, telling someone, hey, this is, this is our love, like, we're in love, like, this is us, or you could be talking directly to the person that you're in love with. Right, right. Mm -hmm. For me, and this may be different for you, for me, that's the strongest choice. Put the person, I like to pick the clock above the people at the back of the hall, right? Put them somewhere and sing to them. That's what this song is. This is me telling you what it means to be in love with you, okay? This is me telling you how I feel about you. This is not me acting out all of my, uh, you know, analogies and my imagery and everything else, okay? But, but, that being said, we have to see that, see that clear intention of you wanting to communicate to someone, okay, all right? And what is the intention here? What is the intention? Can anybody tell me what the intention is? Connection, connection, or? Connection, okay. I would say the intention is to convince. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that simple. I'm trying to convince you that I love you, right? I'm trying to convince you, maybe I'm just trying to convince you that my love is deeper than Joe Blow's love, right? <laughs> my love is the real thing, okay? Yeah. We say these things because we're trying to express the inexpressible, okay? We're trying to express the inexpressible. And so we come up with, with all of these things, you know? And the nicest Valentine's card I ever wrote to my wife said something like, you know, I would write something pretty here, but there really are no words to describe. Because that's really where this all ends up, right? But the French are not to be, you know. <laughs> the French won't be, won't be stopped, right? Okay. So they're constantly trying. And that's what poets do, right? They, that's what poets do. So they're trying to help you to communicate and communicate your focus. All right? Um, you, might do, you might be doing um, a, a, piece, a piece that's more illustrative, you know. It's got, you're telling a story to the audience. But then 
by that, in that case, by all means, break the fourth wall. Okay, break the, what's the fourth wall? Yeah. It's the invisible wall between you and the audience, okay? If you're telling a story, tell them a story. Have a little bit of fun with it. Did everybody hear, um, he sang Black Max? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? You know, Black Max. And he's telling you a story, right? That's the whole point of that. He's telling a story. What's his intention? His intention is to amuse. His intention is to entertain, okay? Now, be careful with entertain, because it's very simple to say, well, that's always my intention. All my, all my songs are going to be, you know, it's hard to sell entertain for 45 minutes of music, okay? All right. So, bottom line, have focus, have intention, have purpose to what you're saying, and then we'll buy it. We'll buy in for you, okay? The last thing I want to leave you with is, what I tell all of my students is, in terms of acting and being nervous and being up in front of people is, has anybody ever seen a bad comedian? Yeah. And it just kills you. When someone walks onto a stage and they look scared, or they look nervous, or they make all sorts of, worst thing of all, they make all sorts of apologies. I've had a cold for like three weeks, I'm so sorry, this is not gonna work. You know, okay? The audience is in trouble. They're in trouble, because they're sympathetic. They're worrying for you. They're worried about you. And that is not where you want your audience, okay? The last thing I wanna leave you with about is just a little bit, it's lying, <laughs> okay? Yeah. So when you're nervous and you're scared, if you walk out on that stage with your chest high, your shoulders relaxed, and you take that stage and you say, I'd like to sing Cebo Balare for you. And you know what? It's the best Cebo Balare you're gonna hear all day long. You don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but you think that, okay? And not in a negative, angry, not angry or anything, just this is gonna be really good because this is my version. Not Bobby's version, whatever. Right? The audience, they eat that alive. Right? That's what they're waiting for. They're waiting for somebody to come out and make them feel comfortable. You know what? Here's a dirty little secret. So are auditioners. So are auditioners. They want more than anything for somebody to come out and make them feel comfortable. Right? And make them not have to work so hard to figure out how you could have done it better. So if you come out and you're confident and you're smiling, you're 90% of the way there. Okay? All right. I hope this was helpful.